ready? Shall we set it? These two chairs? These two? We need adjoining chairs, I think. Yeah? Well, we can move this around. If you put uh, it, if you weave here, yeah. okay. and you somewhere here. And use this as the direction. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah? So he's only for this sitting here. Yes? Okay. okay for you? Yeah, yeah, that's yes. So he's holding this one sit here, and I'll sit here. Which direction will he be coming from? Please stand a little bit. I think it's not necessary, you know, not that. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, what do you want? I have the Irish TV chair. I think it should be VC, yeah, yes. Five seconds from now, please. Okay. Well, good morning, Your Holiness. I'm I'm Nula, and I come from Ireland. And at this time of conflict, um, you are addressing us, members of the European Parliament. 
this week you will be can received. I, can I interrupt a second? Yeah. I'm sorry, but I just moved around and I got this lamp just over your head. I don't want you to look like a, a lamp head. I'm sorry. <laughs> to look like a lamp head. <laughs> Cause you might ask a story. I'm sorry, but we've got to do it now then. Uh, yes. There's no, a light. No. <laughs> Some light. <That's> better. <laughs> <laughs> and there we can again. <clears throat> Good morning, Your Holiness, and you're very welcome to Strasbourg. And you've come here to address the European Parliament uh, and the the people and citizens, therefore, of Europe. And you'll be formally received and address us this week. But just now, um, in a more informal setting, maybe you could give us um, your message for the people of Europe, and indeed for all of us at this time of conflict where people are fearful and anxious. Of course, uh, whenever I talk with people, uh, the three points always keep in my mind. The three is, number one, the promotion of human value. Uh, that is, the, I think, one, the important, I think, part of human value is warm heart. And with that, I think human intelligence use maximum way. So combination human mind, or human brain and human warm heart. Uh, so especially when we confront some problem, some crisis, uh, I think the way handle that, I think it's a sincere, compassionate motivation and also keep uh, in our mind interest of the others, others so that's the, the proper way to materialize or to use what is it, uh, to follow non-violent and through dialogue. So, so this is uh, my main sort of my commitment, promotion of human value. Uh, then second, religious harmony uh, among the different religious traditions. In spite of different tradition, different philosophy, different concept, uh, but all have uh, the same message: message of love, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, contentment, self-discipline. So unity, harmony among the different tradition is very possible and necessary. So this is uh, number two: promotion of religious harmony. Then, my third commitment is regarding the Tibet issue. So, since uh, uh, this so, uh, same organization, European Parliament, in I think '88, uh, I had one opportunity is it, to uh, to talk uh, regarding the Tibet issue. There, uh, I made one sort of proposal. So that usually uh, I discuss Strasbourg proposal and also the my middle middle approach so this time of course the uh, an opportunity to uh, once more my sort of appreciation uh, what is it they have done and they always sort of showed genuine concern and sympathy and actually I think European Parliament is one of the our I say the important source of inspiration and hope. So then, of course, I have nothing to <laughs> report good progress. <laughs> no. So far, there's no progress. Uh, but meantime, uh, beside my expression of my appreciation, I appeal to them, we need their support. So these are the main points. Well, thank you. And as a Green Member of Parliament, um, I've always been inspired by your vision of non-violence. And indeed, one of my own heroes is Petra Kelly, and I know you met her many years ago. And I share with her a c campaigning against uh, nuclear 
uh, destruction which would destroy all life and so nonviolence in that context has been very important to me. But when you talk about human compassion and warm heart and, and, and uh, doing well by people and then you see people killed in a terrible way such as happened in New York and has happened previously in Bosnia and as you know happens in Tibet. How do we deal with that? I mean, for me this is a real moral dilemma because, and for many people also, mm -hmm. if you are to combat evil, and I think it is evil when people are killed, must you use force? It seems to be that you must put police military to protect people. So for many, this is a contradiction and a dilemma. And what is your, what are your, what is your guidance for us in hmm. this dilemma? It's, it's a huge Yes, dilemma. sometimes you see, let's say, uh, for self-defense. Uh, now one example, usually I uh, am saying or telling the, audience, if mad dog come, mm. then that time, uh, if you just uh, meditate on compassion and sit there <laughs> doing nothing, that's a little <laughs> foolish. That's a little foolish. <laughs> you need, this is some kind of, I said, the appropriate measure. Yes. Uh, so that's, I think, very, very complicated, very difficult, very difficult. Uh, but my uh, interest or my sort of, I think, the uh, emphasis is Preventive measure. Sometimes, you see, they, uh, due to certain causes, conditions, things become uh, very tense, and particularly human emotion become out of control. Then, at that time, uh, very difficult to to change the situation or to solve the problem through peaceful way. Very difficult. So that's the too late. So the important, I always feel, uh, uh, many you see crisis, the, at the beginning, when you see some uh, sort of violence about to come, uh, perhaps at that time, uh, if the all concerned people make every effort, perhaps it's easier to prevent. But usually, sadly, unfortunately, sometimes, when things are about to move, people not much pay, not much pay attention, sufficient. Just ignore, or just ignore. okay, that kind of attitude. Then things really become, uh, the situation becomes out of control. Then people pay more attention, but then too late. This is my feeling. Mm. So, so I think very, now, I think recent sort of events, and very, very, I think, unthinkable sort of, I cannot imagine this kind of say, uh, terrorism. Uh, uh, now, this I think now remind us now we really need more effort to prevent such horrible things in the future. Now, this is a question of humanity. I think the humanity, entire humanity, have the responsibility. So sometimes I feel. Uh, Perhaps uh, this opportunity, I may discuss some uh, concerns of uh, people here at the European Parliament. They, I think now time has come. The, the, the various sort of level of people, public, uh, in the name mainly, I feel, what to call NGO, NGO. besides government, yeah. non government, or mm -hmm. the people. Uh, I think. Uh, this is the, uh, say the responsibility of humanity, uh, prevention of sort of uh, suffering of innocent people. Although there, I think they, these terrorists, you see, they, I think their real sort of anger, hatred is it towards some individual or some system. But then target usually is they have these look you see they, those who said as a passengers in this is aeroplane and uh, then also the people in the working in the in the what's the world world trade center or something. Huh? Mm. These are innocent people. Mm. So usually small children uh, in the yes. 
women and children. Uh, therefore, now, now everywhere, you know, people, some kind of sense of insecurity, you know, particularly in, in America, it seems there. So, so this is uh, the, the uh, concern of humanity. We can't sort of just leave it to the government. But I think various people now have the sort of I think she should take I think uh, what's it? Two concerns seriously. So therefore, the, if possible, say like religious people or some scientist or ecologist or businessman or educationist and various people uh, in the form of what's it? Non-government sort of uh, uh, way. Uh, some discussion and what is the best way, what is the sort of, I think, possible way you see, to reduce or to prevent such horrible things. Then to, for here, yeah, I feel, I think it's important to listen uh, some of the views or reasons of those terrorists of their own sort of views. I think no harm, listen. Some cases, I think, uh, I think due to, uh, I think the past sort of um, uh, different sort of experiences, some sometimes I think misunderstand, or sometimes I think due to ignorance. Uh, so in any way, some some cases I think some due to injustice. So they they have sort of I think the grieving what's called gr grievance in their yes. in their heart. So I think they. Uh, let them come out, not by violent way, but by word. Listen. Then, now, for example, I think you see their recent sort of their uh, terrorist act. Actually, if you look from I think wider pers wider perspective, a uh, long run, I think harmful for their own sort of I think cause on their own sort of aim. I think now people I think everywhere I think uh, get some kind of a horrible feeling. Isn't it? So you say face to face, mm -hmm. listen, what is their grievance? If their grievance are uh, unreasonable, then of course this is something different. Uh, we can explain more. If there is some kind of sort of reasons there, then what way to overcome? I think government level sometimes may find it difficult. So, so, the, so, I think so you're saying that in some way these awful events c could somehow bring the human family closer together because we must listen to the grievances, maybe not directly of the terrorists who, who aren't listening, who are simply attacking, but to those around them um, and on, of whom they feed because um, we are not immune, we don't feel immune every, anymore. At one point perhaps we felt in the West and in, Amer in the US that we were protected by a bubble against the evils of the rest of the world and that nothing could touch us. I think we see now we can be touched. Yes, and that's that, right. And that we have a responsibility that all human life is conducted in, 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 good, in a good way, that people have food on the table, that they're not dying, that they're not mm. suffering. Mm. Um, particularly as in the Buddhist tradition that you you deal with suffering. That's what you're saying, that we must deal with this suffering. That's we it. must listen. That's it. Uh, I, I think it, uh, the one way the just to stop, to try to sort of stop, I think very difficult. These sort of things, now with I think modern technology, I think few mischievous people I think you can carry such as work. Uh, so complete elimination, I think very difficult. Very difficult. Even you see uh, one generation of mischievous people who can reduce, then another may come. Uh, and then beside that, this is I think more Buddhist viewpoint. Uh, even I think very evil person, under different circumstances, can transform, can can change. So therefore, the just this is something, uh, so someone who really you see doing very negative thing, then just 
uh, I said, hey, we make some kind of demarcation. And they and us, no longer any contact, so no hope to change that site. I think that's, I think, uh, I think not, not right. As, 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 as I mentioned, you see, they give them some kind of opportunity to change. So this is, I think, humanity's responsibility to help these sort of, I think, the very, I say, narrow-minded or some kind of too much anger, these people. I think we have the responsibility to take care. Meantime, every sort of precautionary sort of measure that, of course, is necessary to take. But at the same time, I think take care, not reject these people. Bring they also to the humanity, but then human way more patient way. This is my feeling. But of course I'm not an expert. Well, also... So I, I want you see, to, uh, you see, to, I mean, to, to express or to, to appeal more, I think, non-government level. I think various organizations or some individual, some is a Nobel, uh, Nobel laureate. Yes. I think now time has come, I think, to discuss what to do, what we can do. Well, I hope you will meet, the, uh, well, I know you will meet today in the Parliament our own Nobel laureate from Ireland, mm. uh, John Hume, who won the prize for peace. And these questions have troubled us in Ireland for many, many years. And in 30 years ago, when the violence began, he followed the path of peace and he said exactly as you are saying, we must find the root of the suffering, we must transform it, we must find the non-violent way, the constitutional way, and 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 listen uh, that we are all on one small island together and we must listen to each other. And he's been a great inspiration for all of us and, and now we finally have a path of peace in Northern Ireland, but it's been very difficult. And one thing he did say when uh, September the 11th we must not over-respond. We have to stop the people who kill, but we cannot over-respond mm. because in Ireland, an over-response, for example, in what we call Bloody Sunday, where innocent people, civilians, were killed by the army, that created 30 years Tried. of war, mm. more violence, yeah. a cycle of violence. And that we do not want to see. That's very good. That's very good. Violent, counter-violent. And generally, I think whole, I think world, uh, I often used to feel the, uh, the concept of war is out of date. So, so with that, the, I, I think the solution through violence, I think that also, I feel, I think out to date. So, so if you look from wider perspective and look from holistic view, then only thing is respect the person or the party who disagree with your sort of view or behave something different, but still try to respect and try to show them our sense of concern, our sympathy, our compassion then try to save their own interest uh, out of sort of, sort of uh, concern and compassion. I think eventually, they, they also eventually, I think, realize, you see, we are opposing some of their action out of concern, out of sort of, sort of compassion, not sense of revenge or some kind of retaliate. That brings me on to the question of values. Religion is a, a fundamental uh, formation of our values and how we deal with the world. And um, in Christianity, I think we struggle with this concept of, of a just war. And in, in the Jewish tradition, we have the, the, the concept from the Bible of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I think we can see that happening in the Middle East now, and it just doesn't work. It, it seems to recreate the cycle of violence. In my own culture and also in Islam, you seem to have this tradition of martyrdom also. And um, tradition of martyrdom. martyrdom. 
Mm. It's part of the Christian tradition, the early martyrs. It's also part of the Islamic tradition, and we see it. Some of these people who immolate themselves say they are martyrs. But they, we are all people of the book. This is they, they have all similarities in that the scriptures come from one source. But in the East, in Buddhism, and in the, the Vedic scriptures, we have, I think, a different, um, more profound, if you like, belief in compassion, and that we should be beyond all war, as you say, that it's, it's time is over. Do you think we can together come to some kind of common ecumenical religious value? that we don't martyr ourselves. Is it possible? I think it's very possible. I think it's very possible. Of course, sometimes, you see, recently, sometimes uh, some sort of media use the Muslim terrorist. And then a few occasions I express that term, uh, not right. Uh, I think Muslim as a religion, one important and great religious tradition. Uh, uh, so some people background as Muslim, some involved sort of terrorist, but that I think should isolate from the uh, as a whole, religion as a whole. Uh, so I feel uh, some mischievous people, in the name of religion, I think it's possible. Even Buddhist, I think also possible. Some <laughs> Buddhist. <laughs> Act like terrorists. That also is possible. Mischievous people, I think, possible. Uh, uh, then, uh, in order to defend, in order to protect one's own religion, somewhat what call jihad or religious war, holy war, or just war. I think that. Uh, uh, I think that we should look not only just religious context, but whole. Uh, then, as I mentioned earlier, in human history, in the past, you see, the war is something, uh, one way to solve problem, or defense oneself, or protect oneself. Uh, the war mobilized, or sometimes I think legalized violence, uh, in order to protect justice, or weaker section. So then with that, I think the, uh, sometimes one's own religion threatened, then protect that. So I think concept of holy war or jihad, I think come, come, I think come. So now, uh, I think the, uh, as a, as a, as a I think whole, the assignment earlier, very concept of war is out of date. Mm -hmm. We can't solve problem through war. So destruction of your neighbor is destruction of yourself. So that's the today's world. Today's reality is much different than the previous sort of, I think, in the past time. Now today we're heavily interdependent. And as far as religious, I think, belief is concerned, again, now I think all the different continent, different religion, tradition there, it's very essential to keep one's own tradition, should not interfere one another, but at the same time, because of the information, because of the, I said the, uh, I said the tourist or communication. Uh, communication. Now, for example, in an Tibetan community, uh, within our own community, is it the information of other tradition? Now, is it very available? So similarly, everywhere. So the things are completely changing. Reality much changed. Therefore, uh, even the, I said the other field. The concept of war is, as I mentioned earlier, not the right way mm -hmm. to solve the problem. So outdated. Therefore, the, within the religious context, I think religious war, I think it also, uh, I think outdated. No, no. Perhaps in the, in the past, sometimes may work, but now today, I think that's no longer there. Because we're so intercommunicated. That's right. That's right. Interconnected. Huh? And some people react to this with fear for their own values. But really, we have to all 
exchange our values while that's staying right. that's right. while staying in our own that's right. stru- that's strong strong right. cultures. Mm. So I think it's more interact, more communication, individual basis, person to persons. I think that's the I think very essential. Thank you very much. On that note, we'll thank you. Thank you. And say goodbye. Thank you. Second, I'll make it another shorter shot. I'll make it too short, that's all. You can speak, Mr. Ayan. You can t- say whatever. You okay. Speak with you. Well, I'm, I'm very happy and privileged to hear you. And um, I hope that um, when all of the members listen to you tomorrow, um, we, will, we will feel. Do you, do you think there's some possibility, uh, although I think this is worldwide sort of now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you how to prevent terrorism. This is humanist business, not just a European. But European, European Parliament can, uh, can take some initiative. I think it can take some initiative. Mm. And we are close to the Americans, but we are, we are different. We are so, so I think we can... We Some can we sometimes. Can, Sometimes I, I do, I have this sort of feeling, the government level, uh, sometimes I think they, they may not be completely free. Uh, yeah, they are not free. But like the European Parliament, yeah. I think, uh, uh, maybe I think less sort of responsibility day to day sort of <laughs> work, but at the same time, I think you have more moral authority. Yeah. You can speak. Certain sort of moral issues. I think, for example, I think Tibet issue. You see, you speak more freely, so you done. You have passed some resolutions, but government level, is a more sort of as well, uh, more difficult. So I, so perhaps I think, in the, in the eyes of some other you see, people, say Middle East, maybe I think Union, I mean European Parliament, maybe. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, it's one of our yeah. source of our inspiration. You have discussed with her garden who is the, who has been in China and this question. I didn't we, we felt it not appropriate to ask it this morning, but um, we we are very aware of the issue. Thank you. Me too. She's great. She's great. He really lost. Great loss. We great loss. Thank you. Thank you. See you again. See you again.